In the workshop, Andrew's 504 boiler, part three. Making some important modifications to this Stuart 504 boiler. The first thing to do is to slightly modify the burner by putting more cotton string in the tank to prevent the mess from flooding. And I am also clearing the slots in the tubes. It is important that the mess is only in the tubes and not on the bench. I also changed the water gauge drain tap and repainted the chimney. I removed the end caps of the tubes to have a look at the wicks. I pulled one out and had a close look at it and it was okay, so I put it back in. In this part of the clip I'm replacing the end caps and I'm using some cyanoacrylate adhesive or super glue. It seems to stand the heat quite well. I speak from experience as usual because this is not the first time I've had to do this. Pieces of string that go down the centre of the wicks curl up inside this tank, but there weren't enough of them. Luckily I had a spare wick, so I broke this up, took all the strands out of it and pushed those into the tank. Also followed by the outer part of the original wick too. Now the mess has something to soak into. I did this because I thought that in its original state it was dangerous. Now the mess can't spill out of the tank. What I'm doing here is not cutting the wick, I'm just pressing it down inside the tubes by the slots. What seems to have happened over the years is the wick had hardened under the slots, effectively blocking them. Now when I light the burner, it seems to be fine. I'm lighting the burner using my small Proxon blowtorch, which in no time at all sets fire to it. Because of the colour of the flame, I think at some time a different fuel has been used. Hopefully, after a few mess runs, it should clean up a bit. The yellowness of the flame is a bit of a problem, because yellow flame equals soot on the tubes. But it's not the end of the world, well, not yet anyway. And in the previous episode, the boiler steamed magnificently. The heat insulation against the sides seems to work, they get hot, but not destructively so. The bit of smoke you can see in this clip is from the super glue which holds the ends of the tubes in place. The smell of this is horrific, but luckily it soon disappeared. A health and safety warning when running a steam boiler indoors, whether the fuel is meths or gas, you must open a window and possibly a door. It's also a good idea to have a carbon monoxide detector close to hand. From the couple of steamings I gave the boiler yesterday, my workshop still smells quite bad today. And no, it's not me. Here's a clip from the steam test yesterday, and as you can see, the drain cock is diabolical. Nothing new there, I've always found this kind of drain cock to leak. With the exception of the PTFE lined ones that are used in my triple expansion engine. This is one of a bad batch that I bought from Stuart Models. They changed it so there was no issue there, but I think I'm definitely going to throw this away, although I will dismantle it first for the parts. I found that by moving the valve I could finally get it into one place where the leakage was minimal. But this is not what you want, a leaking drain tap or drain cock or whatever you want to call it. In the end I put a cloth underneath it and lived with it for the steam test. The boiler and burner combination though was excellent. This boiler really does steam. I was quite surprised. So much so that when I had a look at it after I removed the burner, look what it did to the chimney. I've only ever had this sort of problem using coal as a fuel which gets extremely hot. But really I think this is just ordinary paint. I need to repaint it with some heat resistant stuff. Once the boiler had cooled down, the first job was to get rid of this horrible drain tap. I removed it with my Barco spanner as usual, then I just scraped off a little bit of sealant. And this is what I'm going to fit. It's a 180 degree, 3 16 by 40 threads per inch thread globe valve. As usual, I'm fitting the valve with the help of some Loctite 542 thread sealant. And here, using the nut on the other end that I didn't remove, I'm tightening it into position. I omitted to show the removal of the valve itself. But here it is being fitted back in position 
once again using some Loctite 542, and I'm tightening it up with my massively far too large for the job Barco Spanner, which doesn't mark the brass. This Barco Spanner is the 4 inch version, the smallest type that I use. I removed every bit of the original paint using some 100 grit emery cloth in the lathe. It was a very simple job, and in no time at all not a trace of the paint was left. Now I'm in the outer part of the workshop and it's not a particularly warm day, and what I'm doing is painting this chimney with some heat resistant paint or high temperature paint. I find this high temperature paint really difficult to apply. It runs before you even look at it. What I'm doing here is applying very light coats. I'm rotating the chimney until I ended up where I started, then I stopped painting. In order to give this coat time to dry. After a while I come back to the job and repeat the process, one revolution at a time. If I do it any other way, the paint runs very badly. And once again, after a time away from it, yet another coat. Here's a bit of a tip, but I don't really recommend it, I'm just showing it for fun really. If it's cold in the area where you're painting, why not set fire to yourself? I'm just burning off the solvent, being very careful to keep the aerosol can away from the area. All I have to do now is leave this for 24 hours and then give it a light rub down and I use Scotch Bright for this which gives me the finish that I want. And here is the usual shot of the paint drying. The high temperature paint drying. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.